Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back here today for another game review. Today I'm very excited to check out Feudalia from ABBA Games. This is for one to four players. Ages 14 plus will take about 90 minutes to play. And Feudalia is a deck building resource management game in which you're going to have fields, you're going to upgrade fields, you're going to acquire cards, you're going to try to push your luck against the tax collector, turn your cubes into victory points and more cards and upgrade your deck and do all sorts of different stuff. There is a lot going on in this game. It is a very thinky game. A 90 minute deck builder is not something I typically run into. That being said, the middle part is longer than I like it to be at about 11, 11 minutes. So bear with me if you want to on the middle part, but let's open it up and I'll tell you what I think about the game. Alrighty then, we're going to take a look at what you're going to get inside of Feudalia. So first and foremost, we're going to get a handy dandy rule book and scenario book. It is 42 pages, double sided, full color, full of pictures, illustrations, examples. It's quite a beast. Now before you run off scared, let me tell you that the last, you know, 15 to 17, 18 pages are all just different scenarios and how you're going to use the different expansions that come with the game because there is a ton of variability in this game. That being said, the rule booklet could be better. There's just a couple it just was not the most user-friendly rule booklet. Partially because of the font, I was not a big fan of the font or the layout. Like I love all the pictures and illustrations, but it's like just little things like I'll give you an example like this is your last page and this is your page right here and here's your quick reference like you're gonna want to go to this from time to time and it's like why don't you just put it right there or why don't you just put it right here you know you can put your fancy artwork in the book don't put it yeah yeah it's just little bugaboos like that but overall the rule booklet should have you up and running and if you played a deck builder that will help a lot but that being said as you can see there is a lot going on here and this is not even completely set up this is like scenario one i'm not even going to talk about stuff like over there where you'll have like seasonal events and armies and wizards and all sorts of crazy stuff like that i'm going to try and focus on the bare bones basics to give you an idea of how the game works so this is kind of a resource management deck building game where you are going to try to be the first person to get to x number of points and uh, it really depends on the scenario how many points you're going to be trying to go to i will say it's kind of an ingenious system uh this you're going to put right underneath the first player's thing and it will say how many points you need to go to and also who the first player is which is kind of cool so let's get started feudalia what are you going to be doing you are going to start with a typical deck building hand you're going to have a deck full of not crap but things that aren't completely desirable you'll have serfs which when you put them in fields will give you cubes aka resources there's the cubes and you do have a nice little insert right here you'll be able to make and it holds all the cubes nicely which is really good you're going to start off with merchants, which will allow you, they can go in any field you want, and these are going to be your three fields down here. You're going to start off the game with three fields, and yes, at the beginning of the game, you actually draft your fields. Like I said, there's tons of different layers to this game. We'll talk about the fields a little bit later, but what you need to know are they're going to have spots where you can put people, and certain people can go to certain spots. So for instance, this guy right here can go to any of those, but if you put him in a gray field, it's going to cost you a coin, and he's going to produce whatever color field that is. The merchant on the other hand is going to allow you to trade stuff around and get different stuff get black cubes get gray cubes trade stuff around do merchancy stuff you can do it twice uh, next we have ourselves the priest which is going to let you return people from your fields back to your hand very very powerful now another thing i want to mention is that there are actions in this game similar to dominion so this guy if you do the priest right here that's your last action you have used all your actions however if you use this feudal lord you get to do the action plus one more action which is, has the little plus symbol there so you can start stringing things together next we have the reaper he can only be in the yellow field but he's going to give you three yellow cubes which is really stinking good especially if you like reaper and then priest and then reaper again so you could be getting six yellow cubes there but you're going to start with all these cards now there is one bad card that's going to start in your hand but it's actually going to be in your discard pile when you first start the game and that is called the tax collector the tax collector is a little bit like the robber from settlers of Catan, the thief i don't remember which one it's called where 
essentially, whenever this card comes up, bad stuff is going to happen. You are going to have to pay half of your cubes rounded down. So if you had three cubes here, you'd have to pay one cube. You have seven cubes here, you'd have to pay three cubes, so on and so forth. And if you don't have enough cubes to pay it, then you're actually going to have to discard cards from your hand, which means your turn is going to be weaker. And he's going to be shuffled back into your hand each and every time. You can't get rid of him. Tax collector is just somebody you're going to have to deal with. But what you're going to do on your turn is you are going to draw five cards. Typical deck builder stuff right here. And you're going to see what you have. So this would be an absolutely terrible one uh, because I have two Reapers. Uh, well, it's actually not terrible, and I'll tell you exactly why. So the first thing I could do... <sighs> This is, this is poorly planned out. As you can see, I do not have a yellow field down here. So having these two Reapers would be poorly planned, but I just set it up pretty quickly. But let's take a look at the layout of the card. So first, that's going to tell you what color fields you can go in. This guy can only go in yellow, and this is what he's going to give you. Up here is what it costs to get a Reaper, because sometimes they'll be out in the buy row. The buy row will always be fluctuating. And as I wanted to mention, there's more cards that you'll be able to put into there. Quite a good deal of cards in there. But here's how it works. That's the field. That's what you get. That's what it's going to cost you. So this guy, if you wanted to buy him, would cost you five coins, two yellow cubes, and you would have to trash a white hand symbol. So you'd have to trash like a surf in order to get this guy. So you would be more than willing to trash a surf because the surfs are pretty much garbage. The other thing you'll notice is in the upper left hand corner, it has a coin. That's because if you can't use it or you choose not to use it, you can use this guy just to get you money. So for instance, for this turn, I might put this surf in this field and I'll put uh, this surf right here in this field, which will earn me a green cube and it would earn me a brown cube and those actually go physically into the field because the tax collector can take them from you and then I don't really have much use for the merchant I don't believe so you know what I would do I would say all right I'm going to say I'm going to take these four bucks and I'm going to buy something out here so now I'll take a look at the buy row and I'll say "Ooh, what could I buy that actually is not supposed to be out there but hey whatever I look down here and I say, man, there is nothing that I can buy. The cheapest thing is negative uh, five coins and two yellow cubes, and that's because I have a terrible layout here. But normally there would be something you could buy. But I can't buy anything. I can't buy anything from this row either, and I'll talk a little bit about this row later. I obviously can't buy anything from this top row, uh, which I'll talk a little bit about later because there's lots of stuff going on. So what I could do is I could go over here to my card and say, hey, you know what, I'm going to save my four coins. But this game kind of stinks because... Uh, if you save four coins, you're actually only going to get to keep two coins from round to round. So at the end of my round, I would have two coins to continue onward. And then I would put all these cards into my discard pile and I would rinse, wash, and repeat. And that's what you're going to do on a general turn. But let's talk about the different actions that you can take on your turn because there's tons and tons of different actions. I think there's like eight of them that you can do. And each one is kind of important and also help you figure out all the stuff going on in the board. So the first action you can do is you can buy stuff from the rows. And you're going to have a row down here of cards that will go into your hand. You also will have a row up here called Basic Masters. And these are going to be persistent special abilities, or sometimes one-time or two-time special abilities, that you will have. Now, you can only buy these cards once you have upgraded your fields, because right now we have level zero fields. So another action you can take on your turn is you can pay the cost in the bottom right-hand corner right there to upgrade fields. And when you upgrade a field, you go from a level zero field to, you guessed it, a level one field. So let me see if I can find a level. Yep, there we go. So having a level one field is awesome. Why? Well, first reason is it's going to get you one victory point. Those are victory points down there. The next reason is it's going to give you another slot where you can put cards. So let's go back and look at that level zero card right here. You'll notice there's nothing on the top right here. This one has a spot on the top. That's because you could put a master into your field, into your kingdom, into your surf, whatever it is. If you pay the money, you can then put them up here and say, for instance, this guy... He now has a persistent special ability to give you a coin. Now, he actually couldn't go into that field because he can only go into gray places. Uh, but they will give you persistent special abilities or one-time special abilities. They're really good. And they will help you out substantially. Now, the downside to upgrading your fields is that once you get... So right now, we wouldn't have to flip this card over. Right now, we'd be fine because we have one victory point down here. One, zero, zero. But eventually, when we get to... 
two victory points down here, we're going to flip it over. And you say, well, what's the big difference? So let's say, uh, last time when I had four bucks, I got to keep two of them. Once you get to here, you only get to keep one of them. So you're going to be able to keep less money from turn to turn to turn once you start upgrading your fields. They can go up to level two, and a level two would look something like this. Two spots on the bottom, two spots on the top. They rock. They're awesome. Plus, they're two victory points. And that's all I'm going to talk about on those. Uh, let, all you need to know is the basic masters are freaking awesome awesome that's pretty much what you need to know there's a huge variety of the basic masters and when you buy a basic master what you do is you put one additional one out you pick one and then you put one on the bottom of the deck to kind of block somebody else and that's all i'm going to tell you about the basic masters they're cool that's how upgrading your fields work that's how doing that works the other way you can gain coins is you are victory points is you can go all the way up to here where there's a ton of glare so let's see if we can get rid of that glare perfect so up here, you'll have X number of, so three times the number of player half victory points. And if you turn in three brown cubes, you'll be able to acquire one of those half victory points and put it in front of you. Pretty self-explanatory. Once all the victory points are gone from here, then you'll start doing this one. So you'll have two times the number of players, one victory points. You turn in three, three, uh, three gray, three green, you're going to gain a victory point. Once all those are gone, you can start utilizing these guys. Now, you could purchase them beforehand, but you're only going to be able to start start utilizing them once once those two rows are gone and these ways once you get to this point the game is rapidly approaching its close because you're gonna you can potentially gain a victory point each turn by having uh green or by having money and your engine should hopefully at that point be churning enough that you will be able to do that so to refresh, and I'm not going to go too much more into all the different bells and whistles because there's still a lot of bells and whistles to talk about. In this game, you're trying to get to uh, this number of points depending on whatever you put number up here. You are going to do that by playing a deck building game where you're going to purchase these cards down here. There will be more cards than this down here. There will probably be like five, six, seven more depending on the scenario. Those cards are going to give you cubes, and they're going to give you money. Those cubes and money will allow you to upgrade fields, which is one way you'll be able to get victory points, and also to build cathedrals or do whatever these actions are up here, which will also give you victory points. And those are the two main ways that you are going to get victory points, is from upgrading fields and from doing that. Some of the cards will break the rules of that. Some of the uh, basic masters will give you victory points as well, uh, minimal victory points. But that, in a nutshell, is what you're going to do inside of Feudalia. All right, then. Feudalia from ABBA Games. What are my final thoughts? Let's go over the pros. Let's go over the cons. And wow, where to begin? So first and foremost, on the con side, Wonderful Players is somewhat of a restricted player account. Also, the, uh, the solo mode of the game is just you trying to beat your high score, which is normally not how I dig solo games that much. But that being said, I actually kind of enjoyed it with this one, and I think it's a good way to learn the game. Another comment I have with the game is that the rule booklet should have been better. The font choice was just really odd. The fact that the player reference is not on the back. You're going to come back to this quite a few times looking for specific information, and it's going to be more difficult than you would like to find that specific information. I'm not going to go as far to say as this is a bad rule booklet, but it definitely could have been better. And if it would have been better, it probably could have chopped 15 to 20 minutes off your first game and it probably had another five minutes off corresponding games. So I just wish it was better. Also, the game is overwhelming at first. And I think it can be overwhelming for a lot of people because there is just so so much in this game this game was crafted with love you can tell that the person that designed this game was just they this was a passion project but at the same time there's a lot going on and there's a lot to take in and you will have questions from here to there and sometimes i couldn't find those answers in the rule booklet i think there was like one or two where i could not find them in the rule booklet which is a bit of a bummer also i'm glad that the box insert is nice and that they included inserts with the game but the inserts are completely blank like who does that like i have to write i have to write the words down on the insert it's just it's a little nitpick but it's like man couldn't you have printed the names on the inserts it would have just been a little bit easier any other cons i have with the game the biggest con that i have with this game 
is that I cannot, absolutely not, 100% uh, recommend this game to you if this is a game that you are not going to be able to get to the table once every couple months. Like if this is one, if you're one of those people who just buys a lot of games and they just you play them once or twice and they sit on your shelf and then maybe you'll play them again a year or two later, this is not going to be a game for you, I don't think, because you're going to have to go through learning the game over each and every time not because the rules are bad per se but just because there's so much to take in and i feel like the best way to play this game is when you can actually start digging down deep into those expansions and those alternate rules and the different cards because that whoo that's where this game gets better and better and better and better and let's just i think that's what i got on the cons you have to know that this is a meaty thinky crunchy game this is one of those games that i love because when i'm done playing this game i'm like whoa <laughs> let's play kerplunk let's play wits and wagers or something because i want to shut my brain off right now and i love games like that but that's not going to be for everybody any other cons i want to make sure i hit on all the cons with this game um the theme doesn't do anything for me the theme, you know, it's there, but it's like, it's, you know, it's better than like a Dominion or something like that. But still the theme, eh, the theme's not spectacular. I'm really trying to poke holes in this, uh, but, but it's hard because I'm just beaming with excitement to tell you about this game. So let's just get to the pros. Feudalia is an excellent game. It is just fantastic. And I think with better rules and a better way to organize things in the box, this would get a Bowers Best Seal. That's how good this game is. So what do I love about this game? So first and foremost, this is one last con that I have that I do want to mention. This is not a gateway game. This is not a beginner's game. This is a gamey, gamey game. So moving on to the pros, wow, 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 wow. One of the biggest problems I have with deck building, I love the deck building genre, and a lot of people love the deck building genre, is that... A lot of the times, now, people want deck building as a mechanism in the game and not as the mechanism in the game because so many deck builders that I've played and that I've reviewed have gotten lazy. And I and actually, I'll give you a perfect example. I'm about to review another game called Shards of Infinity. Uh, I think it's from, uh, I don't know, it's from the, the company that makes the, uh, the card sleeves. And I played that and I was like, yeah, this is good. This, in an expansion or two, could be great. I really like the game. I could really like the game. Like, they just come out and they underwhelm in their first performance. You need more. And I hate when games do that. I hate when I play a game and I'm like, man, I like the game, but I wanted more. I wanted more options. I wanted more variability. I wanted more stuff. This game absolutely just says, punches that into the face because there is so much going on in this game. There's alternate ways to play. There's trading rules. There's event rules. And normally when I see all these alternate things you can throw in the game, I'm like, man, that's just lazy game design. Like, why? why, why I'm not going to play with much, much of this crap. This game, I'm like, wow, that sounds really cool. Trading resources? Yes, I want to try that. Seasonal events? Yes, I really like the seasonal events. The different cards, the attacking, the wizards. There's expansions built into this game. There's different modules in there. And just, ah, it's so much. And it's so overwhelming. And if you are what I would call a hardcore gamer who loves thinky, crunchy games and variability in a game that you can play 20 times out of the box and not get tired of the game and not think the game is getting the old i feel like this is the kind of game i've played it five times now and each time i was like oh man i want to play it again i want to play it again and yeah yeah i do so what do i like about the game obviously i'm talking i'm waxing poetic here but i don't know if i'm feeling like i'm beating around the bush i love the different styles of play the, the amount of cards you're going to have out of there are going to give you different options and different choices. My favorite aspect of the game, though, hands down, is upgrading your fields and getting those basic masters. Because there is a ton of these basic masters. There's like 40 of these basic masters. And each one of the basic masters is slightly different. And if you get a good one or if you get like, a, a, like one that kind of synergizes with you, it can change on the dime how you're going to play the game. It's like, oh my gosh, I'm getting a coin every single turn which means i really want to focus on this coin this card because i want to get this card because normally this card costs a dollar and i might not have that dollar to spend but now that i have this card like 
now that I have this basic master, having that coin every single turn, it's like, I want that card. I want that card because now I'm going to start, you know, doing this over and over again. And it's, it's just fun getting your engine up and running. And I really enjoy this game because some people, it's, it's like your typical deck builder. It's your, like your typical engine builder. Some people are going to have to be real strong at the beginning. Like, yeah, we're going to win. We're going to win. And then they just could really get to the lull towards the end. And some people are just building and building and building, like consistent. And then some people are like, oh man, I'm starting slow, starting slow, but I'm building up, building up. And then towards the end, they're just crushing it. And I like that. And you have to be prepared for the end game in this because once those cathedrals are gone and then you get to the three big cathedrals down there with the cards, it does change how you play the game and one thing i really like about this game is getting that last point two points point and a half is really hard and it it's i just oh i like the tax collector i like the push your luck aspect that tax collector i was not so sure about that when i first started the game and then i realized it's a straight up push your luck mechanism it's like man i might get this tax collector and he might take all my stuff should I do what I want to do now or should I save up for a really good turn next turn? And I like that aspect of the game. I also like the uh, the aspect of kind of like cheating the tax collector. Well, it's like, well, yeah, I'm going to put exactly three here. And odd numbers are your friend in this game because you have three there. You only lose one. So you might have one in here, one in here, three in here. It's like, oh, I only lost one cube. Or the guy next to you might be like, I lost eight cubes. Maybe couldn't tell. This, this is a really awesome game. It, it just is. It is a game that I think is going to fly under the radar, which is unfortunate. It is meaty. It is crunchy. It is awesome. And it is a game that I'm going to keep in my collection. I'm actively going to make an effort to get this to the table, you know, once every couple months because I like the game that much. And this is one of those games where I'm like, oh, you like deck builders? You you like crunchy stuff? This is the game for you. So in the end, Feudalia. I really, really like it. I think it's an excellent game. Highly recommend this one if you think you can get to, to the table on a semi-routine basis. Like if you're one of those people who only has like 15, 20 games in your collection and you like deck builders and you like resource management and you don't mind a thinky game, Feudali is one that I wholeheartedly recommend to you. Check this one out. If you enjoyed this review, please be sure to click on that subscribe button down below in the comments below. Let me know what's one of your favorite games that just sets your brain on fire and is just like, nope, we're done after this. Uh, for me personally, I got a couple step on felds like that, but I really like Power Grid for that. I, I really love the mathiness of Power Grid and just how after a game of Power Grid, I'm like, nope, I'm done. Like sometimes when I play a game and it's like, I want to play this game again. I never feel that way about Power Grid. I'm like, no, <laughs> no, that's enough counting for this week. Uh, but let me know in the comments below. What is one of your favorite thinky games that kind of just burns your brain a little bit? And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube.